we've actually got a double feature today. A GTX 750 Ti with a reference design from NVIDIA and a, spoiler alert by the way, kick booty ASUS designed one. Uh, this is the GeForce GTX 750 Ti, the GPU by NVIDIA. Very exciting because it's using the new Maxwell architecture, although it is still on a 28 nanometer manufacturing process. Two gigs of GDDR5 memory clocked at 5400 megahertz on a 128 bit bus make this card ideal for light to moderate 1080 gaming on a single display. <laughs> Performance is solid, sure, and power consumption is extremely low. It also has 640 CUDA cores and supports DirectX 11.2 and OpenGL 4.2. <laughs> So the 750 Ti, man, it's no powerhouse, but it sure as heck surprised me on how well it performed. A lot of cool stuff to talk about with these cards, um, but actually I've spent a lot of today already at work. The GTX 750 Ti is not on the surface the most exciting card from NVIDIA that we've ever received. Wow, this desk is dirty. So I have something pretty special here, and uh, well, it might not be special from a performance standpoint, but it is certainly special from an age standpoint, and well, just the sheer condition that it's in. I found this on eBay, and I did admittedly pay a little more than I probably should have for it. I mean, just at face value, these aren't worth but maybe 20, 30 bucks today. But I somehow found a sealed, brand new GTX 750 Ti. I know, right? Wait a second, there's some sneakiness going on here. That is additional tape on top of clearly cut plastic. This has been opened before. Yeah, that's uh, all that was holding these two panels together. You can see the circular tape was uh, what came with the box originally. So uh, that that's really upsetting actually. I just have to check because I feel like I'm going crazy here. I, the seller was asking originally like 95 bucks for this card. I think I offered 75, which is still way overvalued for a 750 Ti. But then I saw the condition. You see it says new. And the only pictures of this card are of the box. And then obviously you're not gonna be able to take a picture of the card itself if it's in the box because it's sealed new. That's what new should mean. If it's been opened before, it can't be new. I wouldn't have paid this much if I had known that. So then, this is our perhaps not new anymore, GTX 750 Ti. This is the Asus Strix OC edition. I think a, a very fine model. It also looked really cool. Kind of looked like an owl, like big owl eyes if you turned it on its side. So I really liked the aesthetics of this model. Although I will admit that my 750 Ti way back in the day was an MSI variant, if I recall correctly. You can see this is what my very first custom gaming PC that I built in college looked like. But this card brings back the memories. And in this video, we're not only going to unbox it, talk about what made this card appealing to the masses, we're also gonna put it through some tests. We're gonna see if it's even worth 40 bucks today in 2024. Probably not, but this should be a nice blast from the past anyway. Are you ready? Stay with me. The Antec Flux Mid Tower combines metal, mesh, and tasteful wood trim for a high quality finish in any build. You'll find five included PWM fans, including one reverse blade model atop the basement, and many additional mounting points for up to nine fans and large dual radiator support. Back connect motherboard support, toolless paneling, ideal cable management headroom, and a baked in fan and ARGB hub are just some of the amenities you'll enjoy in the Antec Flux. It also doesn't hurt that it's simply stunning to look at. Learn more about about both black and white flux models by clicking the link below. Here we are then, our Asus Strix 750Ti, not Asus ROG Strix, it's just Asus Strix back in the day. I'm going to open this box, it looks like it's already been opened. We'll examine the card itself and see if in fact it has actually been used at all. It does appear to have been repackaged. You can see the shroud actually looks pretty good. Nothing standing out so far. We don't have a backplate on this card. We'll look at the PCB a little more closely later. Sometimes that'll collect dust if it's been used. We do have a cover over our PCI slot connector. It's a good start. We do have a cover for the DVI port, but we don't have one for the HDMI port nor the display port. I'm not sure if these came uh, with the card by default or not. I will say the backside of this PCB does look to be a little rough. This here looks to be a smudge of some kind. I'm not sure what exactly it is. I wanna check the golden fingers here. We're gonna have to see if it looks like this card has been slotted into a motherboard. Now, sometimes uh, for testing before these cards are put in boxes, uh, they'll be inserted into a slot. I don't see anything so far. This top side looks to be pretty clean. Elsewhere, the HDMI port looks to be untouched, but the display port up here does not. It does have some impressions and scratches on the inside of the connector, which is totally fine. It's a sign of a used card, but 
It's just that, it, it's used, it's, it's been plugged in and probably powered on, ran, tested, that's not a new car. Yeah, a bit of a bummer that it's not brand new. I thought that would be a pretty unique experience for this retrospective video, but we can take this time to at least talk about some of the other features of the card and what set it apart from its competition when it came out. We get a CD in the box with, I'm assuming some pretty old drivers. Yeah, so these are a display drivers 340.52 and it's good for Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and that is it. So this card launched all the way back in 2014, making it, yes, one decade old, although you wouldn't think that at first glance, this shroud has aged nicely. Now, different versions of this card had different display outs. This one has a single DVI in the middle, HDMI down below, and DisplayPort up top, good for up to three monitor connections simultaneously. Despite their name starting with a seven, these cards actually rely on Maxwell architecture. They do rely on the 28 nanometer process. There are a little over 1.8 billion transistors packed into one of these dies and each shipped with a two gig frame buffer. Only a 128 bit bus with a 1350 megahertz memory clock speed, but it was okay for the time. But like I said earlier, these cards had a fairly low power demand. The TDP was only 60 watts and the recommended power supply wattage at the time was 250. I'm not sure you could get by with that today. I still remember my thinking going into a 750Ti purchase way back in the day. I thought that this card was gonna perform better than it actually ended up faring in most of the games that I threw at it. I'm not sure why, I guess part of it was just my inexperience. I hadn't done enough research. And the other part of it for me, again, this ties into the lack of know-how, was that I thought this card would be pretty good because of how it looked. I thought that since it had two fans and a beefier cooler, in hindsight, this is actually a pretty small cooler, but still, it's what I thought at the time. I thought that it would be a better performer and that just goes to show you that you can't always judge a book by its cover. This card struggled to maintain anywhere near 60 FPS and 1080p with most relevant titles at the time. And that was a bit disappointing because one of the reasons why I wanted a game on PC was to experience a higher refresh rate. To better put things into perspective, here's a chart of 3D Mark Fire mean graphics scores for a variety of graphics cards and a variety of ages ranging from something as weak and as old as a GTX 750 Ti up to a very modern RTX 4080. Sale price for each is the average of the 10 most recent eBay sales. So you can see the GTX 750 Ti is selling on average for about 40 bucks and cards like the RTX 3080 are selling for about 350. Again, these are used prices, not new. And when we divide each score by each sale price, we're given a value. Now, historically I've used Time Spy graphics scores here, but I had to switch to Fire Strike because the 750 Ti doesn't officially support the full DX12 API. And so to keep things more or less apples to apples, even though this is only one synthetic benchmark, I decided to revert back to Fire Strike. Cards like the GTX 1070 and 980 Ti are among the best values in this range, somewhere around 200 or 250 is considered excellent. The GTX 1080 is up there. Cards like the GTX 1080 Ti fall a bit outside of that. The RX 5700 XT, from AMD, and the same goes for the RX 6800, one of the most powerful cards in this chart that still maintains a decent value. However, outside of the RTX 4080, which admittedly is too new to be a great value in the used market, the GTX 750 Ti takes the cake as the worst graphics card value in this list. You also get a better sense here of just how weak the 750 Ti is, even when compared to something like the RX 580, which isn't a bad card, but it is a weaker card considering what we're working with today. Even the GTX 1070, performing about four times better than the 750 Ti in the synthetic, only costs about twice as much as the 750 Ti on eBay. $40 versus about 75. So you're getting double the value in a car that only costs about eh, 30, 40 bucks more. And therein lies the problem. Why in 2024 would you recommend somebody spend $40 on a GTX 750 Ti when for about 30 bucks more, you could get a GTX 1070, which again is four times as good roughly on paper. It, it doesn't add up. This isn't just limited to 750 Ti's, mind you. There are several older, weaker graphics cards on sites like eBay that don't sell for less than about 30 or 40 bucks. It's very tough to find graphics cards sub 30 USD, and I think a lot of it has to do with seller mentality. Is it really worth a seller taking the time to create an eBay listing, packaging up an item, taking pretty photos of it? It's a bit of work, and some folks might not think that that's worth 
the 20 or $30 profit you'll get after eBay's cut. And I kind of understand that. Past a certain point, it just doesn't make any sense spending more time on something that won't make you any decent amount of money. And I think these cards are falling victim to that mentality. Nonetheless, I'm still curious how this card performs in modern games. We've got a system here that we've assembled specifically for graphics card testing like this. Nothing in here should bottleneck this graphics card, especially with the games we're gonna be throwing at it. The 750Ti is gonna struggle in pretty much any resolution at this point. And I definitely don't wanna throw 4K at it because that, that's just completely unrealistic. We might even <laughs> fail to break 10 FPS with some titles. So I'm gonna stick with 1080p, still by far the most popular gaming resolution. Can the 750 Ti cut it? I don't think so. Well, this is a bit unexpected. GTA 5 seems to be running just fine. Granted, we are in a lower preset here in 1080p. We're averaging over 100 FPS, which is pretty fantastic. And as we make our way to the road scene, things are still extremely smooth. You can see our GPU is being leveraged quite a bit. Our CPU still has plenty of breathing room, which is by design. We want our graphics cards stressed the most here. And that is the case even in 1080p for the 750 Ti. I've got to say though, I'm impressed. This is an older title, sure. It doesn't look that great in low settings, but it plays. Moving on to F1 23, with a bit of help from FSR, we're actually averaging about 45 FPS. Now I would recommend 60 all day at least for a racing game like this, preferably 120 if we could pull it off. Of course, that's not in the cards for our 750 Ti. I'm a bit shocked it's doing this well, and shout out to AMD for making FSR available to all cards from all manufacturers, not just themselves. Uh, but this is still not something I recommend anyone try. Where things became especially bad though was Starfield. Now I thought this game would run at literal like seconds per frame. I, I did not think it would look good at all to play a game this graphically intensive on a card this old. And while I was able to get into the menu and attempt to load my save session, the game crashed every single time. Crashed straight to desktop. So uh, yeah, Starfield's not in the cards. How about the finals then? Another big shout out to FSR. It is totally saving our butts here, keeping our frame rate somewhat acceptable. Like it's not fantastic, okay? But it is a lot better than what it could be. Speaking of, this is what that exact same game looks like with FSR turned off. Our frame rate almost gets cut in half and that makes this game literally unplayable. So uh, this card is really only gonna be viable for modern games if it has support for features like FSR. Otherwise, just don't count on the 750 Ti pulling its weight, especially for the price paid. And now it's time for our last title, one that will definitely show our card's age, Dirt 5. This uh, is an abysmal frame rate. We're not even getting 30 FPS on average, and we're in the very low preset. It's pretty pathetic to look at, to be honest. Totally unplayable, but I think this is due in part to the fact that our 750 Ti does not support the full DX12 experience. This is a DX12 title, and you'll notice that our GPU utilization is somewhere around 60 to 70% on average. This should be at 100%, like hands down. There's no other bottleneck in the system for this game apart from our graphics card, but you can see it's not being utilized fully, and that I think has to do with the API. So just another reason why you might wanna stay away from an older graphics card with a newer title. So so then, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows for our 750Ti, and that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. It is a very old card, and that's not to say that all old cards suck. Of course, some are actually really great values and are still viable for modern gaming, but this one certainly isn't. The 750Ti has aged rather poorly over the last few years. At a certain point, technology just becomes completely useless for modern demands, and I think it's finally caught up to our card here. I don't recommend a 750 Ti. I, I, I really don't, unless it is the only option. Maybe you got one for free and you have virtually no budget. But I do think that if you could fork out about 70 or 80 bucks for a graphics card, there are much better options and frankly, much better values. This one just isn't one of them. So then, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 750 Ti is not one that you should consider. It is certainly not one you should just go out and buy blindly. It is one I recommend you avoid. Even in tighter budgets, it just doesn't make any sense to spend 40 bucks on this when even 60 or 70 bucks will get you a card that is four times as good. Yeah. I think I'm done with 750 Ti's for a while. She's purdy, but she ain't that purdy. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Retrospective. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about GTX 750 Ti's in 2024. I'm sure many of you at one point or another owned a 750 Ti, maybe gamed in a PC with one. These were, they were okay. 
back in the day, but they are just far too obsolete to consider for any level of modern gaming. And a retro rig, maybe if you just wanna use it for like an HTPC or something, I mean, sure. But when it comes to gaming, I think it's out of the question. Check out relevant links in the video description, including where to buy these if for some reason you have an urge to uh, experience this blast from the past and uh, stick around for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.